The Russian-Turkish cooperation in the energy sphere is of truly strategic nature. Rosatom continues building Turkey's first Akuyu nuclear power plant, which will have four nuclear Russian four Russian designed nuclear blocks. Some twenty five thousand Russian and Turkish nuclear specialists, engineers and workers work days and nights to make sure the station is commissioned in twenty twenty four. April this year first nuclear fuel was loaded to the nuclear station and the station was officially recognized by IAEA as a nuclear object, making Turkey a member of the Peaceful Nuclear States Club. Our countries keep cooperating in the gas sphere. So over the Turkish stream and blue stream, Russia supplied 21.5 billion cubic meters of gas and over 10 billion cubic meters of gas from January to August. And Russia is committed to remaining a reliable partner and supplier of cheap and highly efficient kind of fuel. Moreover, Russia is ready to transit gas through Turkey to third partners. With this aim, we suggested creating a nuclear gas hub on the territory of Turkey. A road map is being worked out. Another matter on the agenda is creating a work group and agreeing on the legal framework of the operation of this gas hub. Russian-Turkish cooperation in agriculture is going forward with food supplies growing last year to $7.5 billion. And this growth continued in January to July this year by 19%. The matter of developing tourism was also discussed. Over 5 million tourists from Russia visited Turkey last year. And over the first half of this year, the number was 2.2 billion million people. And we expect this dynamic to remain in the future. Our authorities will keep working with the authorities of Turkey to make sure that Russian citizens' stay in Turkey is safe and comfortable. Our Turkish friends are doing their best to ensure this. Russia has always been a friend and partner to Turkey in overcoming the consequences of catastrophes and natural disasters right after the disastrous earthquake in February, our country was among the first to send rescue workers to Turkey. And we provided Russian B-200 amphibious aircraft to fight forest fires in Turkey. And of course, during the negotiations, we paid attention to topical international issues, such as the situation around Ukraine. Of course, we talked about the so-called on the 18th of July. Mr. President paid a lot of attention to that. As I said before, Russia was forced to take this step because Russia, the Western countries blocked and keep blocking the, the grain deal in part of access of Russia's agricultural manufacturers to world markets. So they refused to lift sanctions off our grain and fertilizer manufacturers. They will not resume supplies of agricultural machinery and parts, and they will not lift sanctions off bank and insurance companies. And while Russia was delivering on its security guarantees for vessels, the other, the other party was using humanitarian corridors for terrorist attacks against Russian ships. This cannot be tolerated in the future. Obviously, the stoppage of the deal did not affect the world food markets. I would like to point this out, whatever others may say about this. Grain prices are keep, keep going down. There is no shortage of food. There are problems with its fair distribution. This is true, but this has nothing to do with the so-called grain deal. We see no nothing surprising about this because the share of Ukraine in the world grain exports remains at 5%. 
and in current situation it's going to reduce to be reduced to put it mildly the west was deceiving us regarding the humanitarian nature of the grain deal because out of the 32.8 million tons of cargo exported from ukraine over 70 percent more than 70 percent went to rich countries EU, eu countries first of all well the the countries that really need food received only three percent less than one million tons i would like once again to reaffirm our position we are ready to resume the grain deal and i told mr president today once again and we're going to do this the moment the other party delivers on all conditions on lifting restrictions on russian exports russia despite all the obstacles is going to continue exporting food and fertilizers to encourage the stabilization of prices to that end we offered sending one million tons of grain from russia at preferential prices to be processed in turkey and then transported free of charge to the poorest countries and in this respect we count on help the state of qatar who is ready to support the purest countries and by the way we're quite near to close the deal with six african states where we are ready to send grain free of charge and we're even ready to cover the logistics costs to have the cargo delivered the negotiations are nearing completion and i think supplies will begin in two or three weeks during our talks we discussed matters around the syrian settlement we value our cooperation with the republic of turkey in this regard so we are cooperating constructively within the Astana format the most efficient mechanism on Syrian consultation for the moment we share basic approaches to resolving the Syrian crisis such as respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity of this country we realize that launching complete restoration of this country will require to reach national agreement and we know that the future of Syria should be determined by Syrian themselves without any external agendas forced upon them. So we confirmed our complex commitment to settling the multi-year crisis in this country, avoiding outbursts of violence. In general, I think that our exchange of opinions on this and many other matters was very successful and I would like to express once again my gratitude to the President of Turkey, Mr. Erdogan, for our joint cooperation for a fruitful and rich dialogue. No doubt today's negotiations will, will further Russia-Turkey partnership in all areas. Thank you. Once again, I would like to express my gratitude to President Putin for his invitation and seizing this opportunity. I would also like to express gratitude for the support given by Russia after the earthquake that happened. After that, we remain in close contact via phone conversations. And today we had an in-person meeting and we also had an interdelegation meeting. 
we talked about the steps that could be taken to further strengthen our multilateral cooperation, especially in trade, in energy, in farming and in tourism. Last year, the trade between our countries reached $69 billion. And we are moving towards reaching the $100 billion milestone of trade between our countries. Last year, 30.2 million Russian tourists visited our country in over the first seven months of this year, 37.5 million Russian tourists visited our country. I believe that the last five months of this year, this number will grow even further. The Black, Black Sea Initiative As for the Black Sea, and we are glad that Russia is opening its office in the Republic of Northern Cyprus. We, the Black Sea Initiative played a key role for the poorest countries. So it, it really helped the poorest countries like a breath of fresh air. An alternative option that was put on the agenda did not satisfy the expectations in regards of security and other aspects. Our Russian friends, they are talking about their expectations and in this regard we are making an emphasis on these expectations on various platforms. And I shared with my esteemed counterpart that we are ready to hold such consultations and uh, I shared this with my friend. We are going to draft a new package in consultation with the United Nations organization. I believe that we will be able to achieve a result in this regard. Turkey will make every effort and we believe that in the shortest term we will be able to achieve result in regards of this deal. Your media representatives to establish lasting peace and stability in, in our region. We are making every effort to this end. In every my speech and every my statement I say there are no winners in war, there are no losers in peace. And we adhere to this principle, to this principled approach. Earlier we held direct talks with the parties and as always we are ready to make contribution in this regard. And we also talked with President Putin about other regional and global issues and in this regard we gave our assessment to the situation in Syria, South Caucasus, in Libya and also in Africa. We are developing our bilateral relations based on the principles of good neighborliness, friendship, sincerity to make this relation serve the interests of our countries and our region. We can see the advantages of the Russian-Turkish relations built on this foundation on over the vast area. Our close contacts with Russia will continue to help to facilitate the resolution of the global and regional issues. And in particular, I would like to speak about the AKU nuclear power plant, as is known, the construction works are undergoing, are underway. And the second step in this regard in Turkey, in Sinop, and we talked about this city with my dear friend, we talked about the construction of the second nuclear power plant. And with this step, Turkey will exceed the reach a new level and in conclusion of my speech 
I would like to thank Mr. Putin once again for hospitality extended to me and my delegation. I hope my visit will be to the benefit to our countries and to the region. Now we invite the Russian Turkish journalist to ask one question. We start with our guest, Turkish journalist. Please, the floor is yours. I've got a question to both presidents. In the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, President Erdogan, you said that you are making a lot of political diplomatic efforts. During this meeting, did you talk about uh, truce, about starting the negotiations? As for President Erdogan's efforts to settle the crisis around Ukraine, he has always paid a lot of attention to this matter, including our one-to-one -one conversations. And we know that with his mediation, an agreement was reached and drafts of documents were coordinated between the Russian and Ukrainian delegations, but Soon after that, Ukraine sent those documents to the rubbish bin and nobody's coming back to them. We've been hearing about some new initiatives, but it's not something that was ever discussed with us. So we haven't seen anything new. And as for mediation services, well, we have never refused from them. We know about mediation initiatives from the People's Republic of China and uh, some African states. And of course, we are grateful to the Turkish president for his efforts in this regard. And as for resuming the grain deal, well, I can hardly add anything new to this. We initiate, initially, we agreed to participate in it because we had agreed, again, with the mediation of the President of Turkey and the United Nations, we agreed on a certain number of terms in the interests of the Russian party. And when we saw that no terms in favor of Russia were, were met, and we were asked to extend the deal, again, under promises of doing everything, we agreed to extend the deal, and again, nobody did anything for us. And once again, for the third time, we were asked to extend the deal, promising to deliver on their promises. Well, as it often happens, as is often the case with our Western counterparts, again, they fooled us. They didn't do anything. And now we say that we do not object against this deal. We are ready to come back to it the moment the promises they gave us are delivered upon. If they do what they promised, we will be back in the deal in a matter of days. What else can I add here? We always insisted, we always agreed, that those corridors used to deliver food should not be used for military purposes, and unfortunately they were used by the other party, and we see that, as well as there are attempts of attack, attacks against the, the, Turkish, the Turkish stream that are used to deliver gas to Turkey. Our naval vessels guard those pipelines, but they're always the pipelines are always under attack by Ukrainian unmanned vis vessels. So we, we need to come to an agreement that no such things 
repeat in the future and that all promises given to Russia are delivered upon and we'll be back in the deal. No problems with that. We're expecting a good harvest this year. Last year it was 158 million tons. And, and this year I think we expect around 130 million tons with an export potential around 60 million tons. And Turkey is a, a big partner of ours in this respect. Turkey has very big grain processing industry and we're going to cover all their needs. And together, as Mr. President insists, we are ready to get back to the Black Sea Initiative to supply food together with Turkey and Qatar to the poorest countries. And we are ready to be delivering 25 to 50 thousand tons to the poorest countries literally in the next few days. We are ready to work we work in all these areas. Yes, as Mr. President said, especially in this situation, Ukraine with Russia, I mean, in their joint steps, Ukraine should make their approach softer, especially currently the Black Sea Corridor. will serve for the countries most in need that are going to receive this grain. But 44% of this grain, if it's going to be supplied to the European countries, then it's only fair that Russia is saying the right thing. 14% was supplied to Turkey, some 6% in this vicinity was supplied to the African countries, but one way or another, we with Russia, we want to supply grain to the neediest African countries and during our meeting so we said, let's send one million tons to the poorest countries, and we are ready to work together in this regard. We're ready to work on logistics. We are willing to do that. And along with this operation, we are preparing to send one million tons to the neediest countries. And we told Mr. President that Turkey is willing to make every effort to process one million tons because uh, we can use the flower making capacity of our country to do that and then we can send this flower to the poorest African countries. We can do that. We also made this suggestion and in this regard we have achieved an agreement and hopefully President Putin those requests that are coming from the African countries and Mr. President talked about six African countries. Hopefully these steps will be taken by us jointly. Interfax Agency, hello. I'm going to have two questions. One follow-up question to both presidents. Now you talk, talked about the grain shipment with the participation of Carter. Could this option be a partial or full replacement for the grain deal, for the grain deal mechanism. And the second question for President Putin. Mr. President, now many sources are saying, claiming about certain problems. Western sources are saying about the Ukrainian counteroffensive not going as fast as they would have wanted to, get being slow. What do you think about that? And is Russia ready against this backdrop to any negotiations to settle the situation diplomatically or politically? Well, as for the grain deal, if we return to that, we do not see our cooperation with uh, Turkey and possibly with Qatar to ship one million tons of grain as 
an alternative to the Black Sea Initiative, because it involves Ukraine, which has its own interests. Of course, we realize that fully. So it's not a replacement, but it's a very big contribution on our part, would have been a very big contribution on our part to solving the African continent's food problems. When asked for the bad rates of Ukrainian offensive, it's not a bad rate of advancement, it's a failure. This is what it looks like. And I hope it keeps looking like that. I just wanted to say that Russia has never refused to talk. And Mr. President mentioned this and I confirmed this today. Russia has never refused to negotiate. Yes, participation of Qatar, and especially in regards of the poorest countries, countries most in need, African countries, after the grain is processed in our flower making and reprises, Qatar is going to financially support this project, so this trio, Russian Turkey Qatar. Hopefully the poorest, neediest African countries. We are going to be a part of this initiative, so thank you very much. Afrique Média, le monde, c'est nous.